What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with another episode of Electrician U and today we're going to talk about wattage. So, what is this whole wattage thing? What are watts? Uh, well, depending on what you read, a lot of people are like, well, it's just electrical energy or like it's electrical power, but what does power really mean? Um, it, it's not a unit of a specific thing, like a quantity of thing. It's a quantity of a thing over time. So it's a rate. Before we even really start this whole discussion, we need to look at three terms and kind of understand what those terms are. We've got work, energy, and power. So work is really like being able to do something. Like for me to, for me to like move this from here, I am doing work. So I know that seems silly, but like if you're in physics class or something and you're like, what is this whole like work thing? I don't get why all of these things talk about work done or work accomplished or jewels is a certain amount of work done. Work is just doing something to make something else happen. So anytime, uh, you know, like water is falling, that is actually uh, an energy that is happening that you can utilize to do work, to like make a thing spin and generate electricity. So that's just the work piece of it. Energy is simply the ability to do work. So energy is not this like ethereal, you know, like weird thing coming off of things. It literally energy just means that there is a capacity to do work. And power becomes really important because it is the rate at which work can be done. So it is a certain quantity of work done over a certain period of time. Now, when we're talking about electrical power, we're talking more specifically at how many joules of work are being done per second. So joules per second, we call that a watt. So joules, if you think of like, joules are really a quantity of work. It's the, the actual quantity that we use to talk about work. And then to, to talk about like just the quantity of joules, excuse me, that's not really helpful. It's not helpful to like have a certain amount of joules and understand that. Just like when you're talking about coulombs of charge, if we talk about amperage. So the reason we use amperage for current flow back and forth is because we wanna know how much of it is flowing through a certain point in time because that energy is always moving and that's what we use electricity for. We don't just need it in a static state. So when we talk about the movement, we don't just say, oh, well, we have like 15 million coulombs sitting there. That's not useful. So coulombs of charge passing a certain point and in time, a rate is what we call amperage. So when we discuss things, we talk about the current flow. We talk about amperage because it's just knowing that rate is a more useful thing to, to talk about. Wattage is the same thing. It's just different. Instead of coulombs of charge per second passing a certain point, we're talking about joules of work being done per second. Now, another thing that's kind of difficult to understand if you're like reading manuals or blog articles about this is the actual math. So if we look at the math, we have an equation. This is called Joule's law. It is very incorrectly called Ohm's law very often. Ohm's law is the uh, relationship between voltage and amperage and resistance in a circuit. It has nothing to do with power consumption or, or power at all. Um, so if you're looking at power, you need to use the Joule's law equation, which is an equation uh, that uses voltage, amperage, and power. Um, so Joule's law and Ohm's law look very similar. Some, uh, some people call like the Joule's law, they call it the Ohm's law for power chart, <laughs> but those guys are electricians. So to understand what a watt actually is and what it equals and what's happening in an electrical circuit, we need to understand the math formula to it. So there's a mathematical formula in physics, it's P equals V times I, where it's the power uh, is equal to the voltage that's applied um, times the amount of current that is flowing through that difference of potential through that voltage. And that usually equals one watt. So it's the amount of joules per second that are being transferred between a voltage at a certain current. 
So for example, if we have one ampere of current, which is again, just uh, coulombs of charge flowing per second. So if we have one amp of uh, electricity flowing through one volt of difference between that potential difference, that is equal to one watt of power per second. So uh, another way to look at this is say we have a 120 volt load and we have a 10 amp circuit. Well, 120 volt potential, if we have 10 amps of current running between that 120 volt potential, 120 times 10 is 1200 watts or 1200 joules of work that is being done per second in this isolated circuit. Now let's talk a little bit about power consumption. This term gets thrown around a lot. Really, there is no such thing as power consumption. Power doesn't get consumed because the law of thermodynamics says that energy can't be created or destroyed. Energy just changes forms between different things. So what we do in electrical circuits is we take mechanical motion and we turn that into electrical motion. And then we might turn it into like heat or we might turn it into light. Um, which is you know still motion or we might have like a fan turn on so we're taking that electrical energy and we're turning it back into rotational motion so electricity is never consumed it's always just uh, taking one form of energy changing it into another kind of energy so that we can do something useful so, so we can do some work um, there is two different types of power. There's what we call useful power, and then there's what we call wasted power. Useful power would be if you're talking about like turning your toaster on, trying to utilize the heat that is going through the circuit, um, the, the little heating elements inside of a toaster, is, it's just wires, it's the circuit. Um, but we're utilizing the heat inside of that thing to cook the toast. So that is all useful power. That kind of dissipation of heat and that radiation of heat coming off the wire is actually being used. So we say that that is useful power. Wasted power would be like if you have a whole bunch of conductors and um, the circuit is really inefficient and you have heat that's coming off of them that you're not capturing to do anything with, it's actually just a heat loss that is considered wasted power. And a lot of times you'll hear people say that it's dissipated, meaning, you know, it's like wasted or it's or it's released. But that power, that energy is not necessarily being dissipated. There is an, an effect, something happening. The energy is changing from one form. It's changing from, uh, you know, motion back and forth, a magnetic field, and it's converting into heat energy and that heat is escaping. So there's nothing being lost in the circuit. There's no like electrons that are just like bouncing out into space and you're losing anything or you're consuming anything. So that term is not very correct. So let's look at a, like a, a little bit more detailed of an example. Okay. So say we have right now, the place that I'm standing. This is a room in my house, uh, but it looks like a studio. It's, we're gonna call it my studio. My studio. Uh, right now we have a utility power plant somewhere. That power plant somehow is taking motion and turning it into electricity. So uh, we have a dam nearby that takes the falling of water, that energy, that motion of water and converts that into a spin. And that spin inside there's magnets. So there's this one kind of, uh, of like natural energy flow of energy that's happening that we're intaking and making something rotate and turning that energy into mechanical energy. That rotation is creating movement in the wires of electrons and we have this electrical energy now that is not mechanical it's being driven by mechanical but it's changed forms into electrical energy and then at my house say i've got a you know like a fan that i want to turn on i hit the switch all of the wires in the wall we've got that moving electrical energy we're taking that electrical energy and turning it into spinning motion inside of a fan and that's changing back to mechanical energy so really power is the ability to do work for sure, but it's more like it's the ability to convert a certain amount of energy from one type to a certain energy of another type over time. That's kind of where it gets confusing, right? Like we think of wattage as just this static number. We look at a 60 watt light bulb and it's we think, OK, well, this is going to like, I don't know, consume 60 watts or it's going to like put out 60 watts of light. 
No, that's not what's happening. It's actually saying that this light bulb at its rated voltage will consume or will transfer a certain amount of electrical energy that's coming in per second and convert that into heat energy per second. So it's just a kind of a conversion tool. And you gotta think of it like that. You gotta think it's taking one thing, changing it into another thing at a certain amount per second. Now, another thing that's worth talking about is the difference between wattage and volt amps. This, when I was an apprentice, like I didn't get at all. I was like, so why do transformers say KVA on them? Which is kilo volt amps. A volt amp is roughly the same thing as a watt because volts times amps, volt amps equals watts because of the, the formula that I just talked about earlier where it's uh, P equals E times I, power or wattage uh, equals voltage times amperage. So we have some things that are rated, you know, a lot of motors are rated in horsepower. They're not rated in KVA or KW, but it's still power that it's rated in. It's just a different kind of power. And then we've got transformers that are rated in KVA. They're not rated in KW. And then we've got generators that are rated in wattage or KW, thousands of watts. So why is that? So if you think about anything that's creating like or that's taking like mechanical motion and converting it into electrical energy we say that that's a generator it's generating electricity but what it's doing is it's changing a certain certain amount of work from one form to another completely different form so we are taking that joules of work per second and converting a certain amount of joules per second into a different kind of energy that is what you use wattage for. So anything that you're gonna see like a generator that's rated in wattage, you see an incandescent light bulb because it's taking electrical energy and it's turning it into light energy or heat energy. It's converting. It's basically anything that's like a conversion tool from one kind of crazy thing to a different thing. Like you got Optimus Prime driving as the semi and then he changes into Optimus Prime, the super like shooty badass. <laughs> you know, like converting from one thing completely to a different thing, but still like an ability to do some kind of capacity of work. Now that's one kind of device. The other is something that takes electrical energy and converts it into mechanical energy. This would be a motor. So a motor is taking in you know, one thing, it's converting to a completely different thing, but it's rated in horsepower rather than wattage because it's just taking in electricity and making mechanical motion happen. So it's kind of equating this device to, you know, how, how much stuff can this mechanically do in comparison to like how much a horse could do. So it's a lot, it's an older term. Horsepower has been around for a long time. Just so you know, uh, one horsepower, the power of one horse being able to like pull something is said to be equal to about 746 Watts or you know, joules per second of work. So one horsepower, 746 watts, both of them are kind of transferring or moving, doing the same amount of work per second. And then the other thing is transformers. So transformers are rated in VA. A transformer is a conversion device, but it's not converting from one type of energy to a different type of energy. It's converting units. So if you have like a hundred, watts or 100 VA, I'm sorry, 100 volt amps is what it would be rated in. That means that you have uh, like 10 amps at 100 volts that you're feeding in. And you can change that through the windings of the transformer to be 10 volts at 100 watt or 100 amps. So 10 times 100 is still 1,000, 1,000, 1,000 on each side. It's still the same amount of wattage, but not wattage because there's reactive power and power factor efficiency and all these other things. But you're basically, it's, a, it's really like a constant power device. It keeps the same amount of power through the entire system and it's not converting electrical energy into mechanical. It's just taking electrical energy and putting out electrical energy and you're able to kind of convert the units. Now, the last thing I think is worth mentioning is that we have this weird unit of measure uh, that our electrical meters will monitor how much usage of our electrical system there is. It's just a measure of how much energy is being transformed or tr you know, transferred 
from electrical to mechanical through all of the stuff in your house. That's what they're monitoring. So it's kind of funny that we have two different rates. It's a rate of a rate. We have kilowatt hours. So kilo means thousand. Watt is how much joules of work is being done from the transfer of one energy to another kind of energy. And then we have hours, right, per hour. So we have basically how many joules of energy, or I'm sorry, how many joules of work are being transferred from one kind of energy to another per second per hour. I know it's silly. Uh, it's confusing and I'll do a whole video later on about how to actually calculate because this might be something that you're going to see on a test if you ever take your journeyman's test or master test is how to calculate kilowatt hours. It's kind of, you know, like silly. Um, but... Wiser Energy Monitor, brought to you by Schneider Electric. Really cool, there is this app that can do all of this stuff for you. So homes are starting to get a lot smarter. A lot of you guys know, like you got, um, you know, just smart devices throughout the house. You've got your apps that you can control like window shades and lights and open your garage door, you know, through your phone as you're like driving down the street. The smart home thing's not going away. It's only getting more advanced. So Schneider has partnered, you know, Square D, Schneider Square D uh, has partnered up with Sense, which is an app. Basically, it, uh, you install these donuts out in your service. I have a video right here um, of one that I did in the past. I did an install. Um, so I've gotten to use it for a couple of months and see, and it's really cool because on the back end of this thing, it actually shows your usage. It shows line one, line two, you know, what all of your voltage is. It shows you graphs over time of what your power is doing in your house. If you've had any crazy spikes or any dips throughout time, it shows you like low points. Like there's a certain point in mine where in the last month, my voltage dipped down to 56 volts and it, you know, it went back up. It's not anything catastrophic, but it showed me like I need to have a surge protector to protect against all of these different spikes that are happening because it was the first time I was able to see a graph of like, holy crap, this is like, it's all over the place. It's like spikes and, and spikes and dips and all kinds of stuff. So I just think that that's really cool. One thing it does for you is you can look at your electrical bill. You can see um, like what your rate is that you're being charged by your power company, what your kilowatt hour or, you know, cost per kilowatt hour is. And you just input that in there and it'll tell you every single device, every circuit in your home, it starts to identify through over time through machine learning. And it'll let you know, like your, your refrigerator is using this much or your dryer is using this much. Your lights are on all the time. This is how much you're, you're using it, typically in lighting loads. And you can go through the house and turn on each load. But there's a link in the description below if you want to know a little bit more about that. It is the Wiser Energy Monitor. So I hope that that didn't confuse you more. <laughs> so let me know if you guys got any questions. I love you crazy people and I'll see you in the next episode. Best country music and video.